Good afternoon, Pak Fadila Putra. Are you yes. work from home or work from office? We are working from office. Okay. Wow. What is everything in UK? In Sheffield, right? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I live in a. I just live in the countryside, uh, just outside of Sheffield. Yes. So. Um, yeah, we've uh, been having difficult times, but I'm delighted to be here today. Thank you very much, Dr. Dan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Asa Asari. I am Indonesian. I am wearing batik blues with blue color. And it is with a great pleasure that I have given the chance to, the, to participate in this webinar titled Why Disability Studies and the launching of Disability Studies Concentration on Master Program of Women Gender Studies Postgraduate Program at Brawijaya University as well. I hope everyone is doing great and have a good health in this current situation where we all have to face the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, but despite that, we all need to adapt to a new normal and stay connected virtually so we can still do our work and responsibilities as we used to be. First thing first, I want to announce that all audience need to fill out presents and evaluating form at the chat room in order to get the seminar certificate. And I am delighted to welcome and give the most warm greetings to Honorable Director of Brawijaya University Postgraduate Program, Honorable the first and the second Vice Director of Brawijaya University Postgraduate Program, Honorable All Lecture of Brawijaya University Postgraduate Program, Honorable Keynote Speakers, Professor Dan Goodley from University of Sheffield, Mrs. Fifi Yulaswati as Senior Advisor to Minister of National Development Planning on Social and Poverty Reduction, and Mr. Slamet Tohari from Department Sociology of Brawijaya University, Honorable Moderator of this webinar, Dr. Wika MSE, whom also known as Head of Master Program of Women Gender Studies, and Honorable to all beloved guests and audience. Before I turn over the webinar to Dr. Wika MSE as the moderator, I would like to ask Fadila Putra as the Vice Director of Brawijaya University Postgraduate Program to say a few words to the audience and give brief explanations why disability studies matter. Please welcome and time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Vanessa, and uh, good day, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I hope everyone is uh, healthy, safe, and still productive during these uh, difficult times uh, during this pandemic. Well, first of all, I was, uh, want to thank to Professor Dan Goodley uh, for joining us this, uh, in this event. And hopefully this is going to the beginning for our further cooperation between us, or even maybe between the two institutions, Pravija and Sheffield University, and also Bufifi from uh, Bapenas, Indonesian National uh, Planning uh, Body. And of course, to all of the speakers, uh, Amek and uh, Wika, of course, the moderators and the audience. Uh, in this presentation, I just want to highlight uh, two points, Professor Dan, Bufifi and everyone. Uh, one is the obstacles that uh, we're having in uh, initiating this uh, study program. And the second point that I want to address uh, in this uh, opportunity is about the, the chance or the, the opportunity of forming disability program in Brawija University, especially. Um, Pasar Sarjana is uh, one of the specific institution in uh, Brawija University that focusing on the multidiscipline and interdiscipline studies program. Currently, we have three uh, study that focusing on the master and doctoral level degree one is environmental studies, second is security study, and the third one is the gender or women studies. As an interdisciplinary program, we believe that the real problem that we're facing uh, cannot be handled by only one single discipline. So for example, if we try to build a road or the bridge, 
the uh, expertise on civil engineering only cannot do that. It requires many experti uh, expertise, such as uh, accounting, finance, law, government, or even archaeologists. Because uh, we have experience in uh, Indonesia when uh, the government tried to try to build a road, and suddenly one of the site is, you know, uh, there is a uh, archaeologic sites, so uh, the government cannot continue the development of the road. That's that's uh, the proof that you know uh, monodiscipline cannot solve the real problem uh, uh, on the ground. So disability studies is one amongst many uh, issues that requires uh, multidiscipline and interdiscipline, or even multi-dimensions approach. Uh, in disability issues, it covers many aspects such as uh, health service, education, employment, and uh, access to public service in general. Therefore, st disability studies also requires the integration of wide array disciplines. It even encompasses the dichotomy of social and natural sciences. It, many disciplines have to be involved uh, in the studies such as uh, disability studies. However, in the current academic traditions, especially in Indonesia, maybe it's information from Professor Dan Goodley, that interdisciplinary approach in the academia is not something that is usual, where the monodisciplines is dominant in the uh, university, the formal uh, academic institutions. For example, the way how university organize and structure are based on the faculties that are monodisciplines. Even in academic career, the linearity is required. required. For example, if someone wants to be the lecturer, he or she uh, has to be sure that in the under, undergraduate level and then uh, master level and doctoral level has linear in the single disciplines. This is, this is the problem of the, uh, to me, this is one of the problems to develop a rich study such as uh, disability studies. So this is one of the main obstacles for interdisciplinary approach study program, uh, including disability studies, because in the, the regime of the uh, academic organi formal academic organization, it's still you know, based on the monodisciplines approach. So uh, uh, this is the challenge when we try to, uh, when we try to uh, form or initiating forming the disability studies in University of Brawijaya that you know, many people feel not comfortable, many people feel like uh, uh, there is not something that normal uh, while you know, there is a study program in master level that you know, not clear whether it is uh, belong to one or uh, the other uh, disciplines. So for instance, uh, in my experience, when we uh, currently, when we try to initiate this program, I was asked by one of the authority whether, for example, uh, uh, she asked me, uh, what is the prospective student's background should be? Uh, will you accept the uh, prospective student in this program from social science or from natural science? If it's from social science, is it from law? Is it from social political or from economics? So this kind of questions is, uh, you know, uh, uh, very important to the authority in order to approve, you know, uh, like a study program here because the monolinearity, I'm sorry, monodisciplines uh, approach that uh, very dominant. And of course, they also ask uh, further about the graduates. So for example, he or she finished the study in this program, so he or she will be uh, belong to which associations, you know, there, there is a, uh, associations based on the discipline in Indonesia, like accountants and maybe architects or maybe doctors. So if someone graduates from the disability study program, which membership of the association she or she will be belong to? So that, those kind of uh, questions that are very hard for me to answer in in the context of the interdisciplinary uh, program like this, this disability study program that we are initiating currently. However, uh, and also uh, we, we, we not uh, have the independent study, study program yet for this program because the procedures and the requirement is very uh, complicated Hello. in Indonesia. Uh, it's, it's quite complicated, so uh, we uh, 
We not have the independent study program yeah, on this uh, study. From the girl. A question for the disability. What is there is a scholarship for me a schizophrenia? Okay, uh, shall we move on? All right, so in Indonesia, there is no specific pro uh, However, uh, we also have th those are the obstacles uh, or the problems that we're facing when we're initiating this program. However, we also have a couple of uh, uh, couple of positive uh, opportunity why, why we uh, start, uh, try to establish this uh, study program. So uh, one is that uh, the fact in Indonesia, there is no specific program, uh, especially in undergraduate and graduate level that focusing on disability studies. Many of those in a special education program, which only covers about education aspects. As we know that disability is not only about education, it's also about many aspects like health infrastructure, environment, technology, many things that, you know, the existing uh, study program such as the special education program will not, uh, you know, cover this uh, dimension comprehensively. Therefore, I agree that disability studies program in Brawijaya is based on the human rights approach and social model perspective with cover issues more comprehensive than the special education program that already around for a while. Uh, as far as I know, the master's program of disability with these approaches uh, is the first and only in Indonesia. So maybe Professor Dan can also give us the insight how you know the disability program uh, in Sheffield is uh, specifically uh, developed. The second reason why we quite optimistic about this program is that the international attention on disability studies is quite uh, is quite uh, uh, high, uh, and not only international donors but also multilateral organizations, uh, the world leading universities now concerned with this issue. So uh, to me, that this is the opportunity for our students in this uh, study program to access collaboration with international community. And hopefully with this uh, initiation and this webinar, you know, we can attract more collaboration, more people, you know, helping us to uh, uh, develop this uh, study program. So lastly, uh, we agree that disability is an identity, is more than just circumstances that someone having. Thus, it needs not only recognition, but also awareness of and progressive action from the society, including government, to promote equal opportunity to people with disability become fully a part of society. So there are many questions in order to achieve this aim. One probably is that what kind of actions that are actually needed to address this problem? Or what is the assessment of the current situations, especially in Indonesia, about how the government you know, serve uh, people with disability. What are the obstacles and opportunities in providing public service to people with disabilities? What are matters to people with, the, with disabilities? So those are few among many questions that I hope this study program will facilitate to answers. Because I personally believe that misconstruction of problem is dangerous because it will lead to wrong solutions. You know, many people always ask about solution, solution, solution. They, 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 they don't really have a patience to understand the problem comprehensively. Therefore, understanding the problem comprehensively, to me, is more important than the solution it, itself. So I really hope that this even become the beginning to us to understand disability issue more comprehensively. And at the end of the day, we can provide solution, the best solution to the, to the government and the society regarding disability issues. Thank you. Thank you very much to Mr. Fadila for the speech. And now please welcome Dr. Wika MSE to take over and lead the webinar alongside with the keynote speakers. Time is yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ibu Vanessa, as co-host of this uh, sem uh, seminar. 
Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, good morning, uh, Professor Goodley. Good morning, everyone. And uh, good afternoon uh, for all audience in Indonesia because now in Indonesia approaching oh, around 3 p.m. 10 past 3. Is it right? <laughs> okay. So my name is Wiki. I'm convener of uh, Gender Women Studies in a School of Postgraduate uh, Brawijaya University. And for more than uh, two hours, uh, I will be serving as your moderator uh, of this seminar. Uh, as uh, Dr. Fadila Putra mentioned earlier that uh, this seminar is discussing a lot about disability and disability studies including about uh, the, maybe the obstacle uh, Dr. Padilla has mentioned it before. So uh, in this sense, uh, we uh, invite expert to discuss uh, why uh, disability studies. So uh, we have three speakers here. Uh, do, uh, Professor Dan Goodley from University of Sheffield uh, and Dr. Vivi Yulaswati from Bapenas. Bapenas is a National Development Agency of Republic of Indonesia. And last, uh, uh, pro, uh, Mr. Selamat Tohari from uh, Brawijaya University. And they will, uh, they will presenting uh, their, her, uh, their paper respectively. So uh, throughout this seminar, we'll be assisted by uh, Mr. Dimas Nugroho. Mrs. Nisrina and Ms. Arum as typist and sign interpreter. So thank you for that. Uh, we have a role. After all speakers give a presentation, I will continue to guide with session Q&A. So for all audience, uh, can ask questions to all speakers then. Uh, maybe you can write the question uh, in the chat board during the presentation. And I'm not talking too much. Now I can turn to uh, Professor Dan Goodley first uh, for explaining to us about what is disability studies and why we need to study it. Uh, Professor Goodley is a prominent scholar uh, in disability studies and critical disability studies from uh, University of Sheffield. And I believe many of you may be <laughs> Uh, have read his uh, books as I did, or maybe uh, watching your uh, watching his lecturing in YouTube, probably. So, uh, Professor Goodley, time is yours. Thank you. Hello, Makasi. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I do have some slides, but I'm not going to talk to those slides. I think I'm just going to talk to you and keep with the conversation here. I'm looking forward to learning um, from you in Indonesia and across, uh, it looks like across Southeast Asia from the, from the, uh, the chat about your engagement with disability. So the question that has been asked today um, is why disability studies? Um, sometimes, you know, if you ask a child why, they say, why not? Um, and why not is a quite uh, a negative response. The why of disability studies is, I suppose, very important. And it's important because disability studies is a human question. Uh, disability studies is a human phenomenon. And disability studies, as um, was being spoken about earlier um, in the introduction, by um, uh, the professor was is that we need an interdisciplinary response. So what I want to do is just, just very briefly talk through some kind of approaches that capture disability studies um, in answer to this why, and I'm particularly mindful of the COVID-19 context and why disability studies has never been needed more than now. So, as I'm sure you'll know, the traditional ways we understand disability tend to be in terms of a, an individual problem, um, a medical condition, a psychological flaw. And these 
traditional approaches sometimes which draw in uh, ideas such as spiritual failing um, or some kind of individual deficit, lack, constructed disabled people as the problem. And disability studies is a reaction to this idea that disability is a, as a problem of the individual. Disability studies does two things. It works with the idea of disability as problem, and it works with the idea of disability as possibility. From a disability studies perspective, the problem is a social, a cultural, a political, and an economic problem. That is to say that people with impairments, physical, sensory, learning disabilities, mental health, become a problem because of the ways in which society reacts to their human difference. And so we can think about the ways in which disabled people are constructed as a problem for the economy, they're constructed as a problem for education and disabled people are often understood within our cultures in terms of deficit and lack. Now, disability studies then suggest that the problem of disability is not disabled people's problem. That is to say that the problem of disability is actually something constructed in the wider world. And as we know, the wider world is dominated by the beliefs and aspirations of non-disabled people. So one of the biggest problems for disabled people are non-disabled people. Dis non-disabled people like me, um, who through their take for granted ideas through their ways of organizing society, through their conceptions of good economy, of proper education, construct those ideas for non-disabled people. Now, this of course is an exclusionary way of constructing the world. And it's a dominant exclusionary way that disability studies seeks to challenge. So the social model of disability, which was mentioned by a professor earlier, which came out very much uh, in the, the thinking of British dis disabled people in the 1970s, separates impairment from society and focuses the attention on society. It looks for social barriers. It looks to challenge disabling ways of living. It's very much political and it's very much focused upon anti-discriminatory legislation and policy. In the States and Canada, 1970s, 1980s onwards, we saw the emergence of something called the cultural approach. And whereas the social model looked at society and economics, the cultural model tried to understand the ways in which disability is created within the kind of quite nebulous practices of our cultures, our histories, our communities, our family histories, and so on. And we find actually that disability is often ever present. Disability is often referred to, used within cultural stories, in, in scripture, in religious text, in Hollywood movies. The disability plays a role. It plays a role sometimes called a narrative prosthesis role, that is to say that disability appears to 
permit us to talk about human failing. And so the social and the cultural models have been absolutely crucial to understanding disability as a social and cultural problem. And I imagine for many of you here today, you will be very familiar with social and cultural models of disability. These are the, the bedrocks, the foundations of the study of disability. But, as I said earlier, disability studies is not just interested in disability as a problem. Disability studies, and particularly what I would call critical disability studies, starts with the assumption that disability provides opportunities. And this, if you like, flipping of disability from problem to opportunity is I think where Western, Eastern, Global North and Global Southern scholars and policymakers and practitioners and advocates can come together to work together to understand what we mean by disability as opportunity. So I just want to spend the last bit of my brief talk here talking you through what I mean about this disability as possibility, opportunity, but also thinking about how we can work together across our continents to really grapple with and take hold of this idea of disability as opportunity. Now, it could be argued that COVID-19 has brought us all together that actually has brought us all together. Here we are on Zoom, online communities or um, readily being exploited and used. And there is a language of COVID-19 that we now have, that we did not have at the start of 2020. The face mask is ubiquitous. The idea of social distancing is common throughout our nations. The word pandemic, is now part of our everyday language. And there is sometimes a, um, a temptation to argue that we are all faced with the same kind of conditions because of COVID-19. Now, that is a mistake. Clearly in the UK, disabled people and poor people are more at risk of suffering long-term health conditions because of COVID-19. Many disabled people in the UK are currently shielding, are outside of communities, um, are not accessing online spaces because of poverty and other reasons. And so we need to always keep in mind that any consideration of disability is possibility is always aware of the wider social and political background which places disabled people, the one billion disabled people across the globe in positions of weakness, poverty and exclusion. Now, quite simply, disabled people historically have had to find ways of supporting themselves and their families. Disabled people have a history across the world of innovation, of community building, and what I would call the creation of interdependence. And this is the first thing I want to flag up here around this idea of disability as possibility. The disability demands imaginative and creative methods of interdependence and community building. And of course, the idea of interdependence is 
has or takes on particular understandings in particular national contexts. So in Indonesia, from my uh, limited understanding of spending numerous months over many years in Indonesia, there is a sense of community, of a collective I, of an individual self that is connected to family and broader community. Now, what COVID-19 has done, I think, has refreshed um, a um, discussion and a consideration of what do we understand by community and uh, interdependence. COVID-19 has shown that we are globally connected, but it's also demonstrated the need for individuals not to be isolated. And it seems to me here that disability can lead the way in thinking through how we organize our interdependencies and our communities. Too often, when policymakers, designers, architects, school planners, educational providers, and so on, too often when those kind of people organize their worlds, they do so without thinking about disabled people. Disabled people are always considered at the end of conversations, at the end of design, at the end of curriculum planning, at the end of policy making. This is a huge mistake for two reasons. One is that disabled people often are involved themselves and have the expertise that can be drawn upon to organize the worlds that we live in. And secondly, as COVID-19 has demonstrated, and as disabled people have always historically shown, we need to be more imaginative in our community building now than we ever have. So to return to the question, why disability studies? Why disability studies? Because we need it more than we've ever needed disability studies. Because if we look together at our communities, we will find in disabled people's own ways of engaging, imaginative and pragmatic ways of being interdependent. But I want to finish by saying, that in order to think about disability studies, we also need to think about disabilities hidden reference. And the hidden reference or reference of disability, of course, is ability. Too often, we ignore the assumptions and the problematic assumptions that we hold about ability. COVID-19 has demonstrated that all of us are precarious, that all of us cannot rely upon ourselves for our own sustenance and survival. COVID-19 has exposed the myth that we are all able and self-sufficient enough to look after ourselves. And if one wants to look for new ways of challenging this kind of problematic ideas around ability, then we need to move back to disability. So I welcome the growth of disability studies in Indonesia. 
And I also welcome the opportunity that we might have to work together uh, across East and West, North and South divides. And I would finish by suggesting that one of the first things we should ask of our own specific context is to what extent disabled people are already organizing and collectivizing and intellectualizing in ways that we need to listen to and draw upon. Be wary of imposing an idea from somewhere else on the specific context and let us turn to our communities, our local communities, as well as our global communities to organize, to create independency and to create ties that bind us. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dan Goodley. Uh, let's insight from uh, Professor uh, telling us, explaining to us about uh, uh, what, 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 what kind of uh, disability and what kind of disability studies. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, if you, if you, all audience want to ask him, uh, so be be patient. Okay. Uh, so we can go to a uh, second uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Fifi Yulaswati. Dr. Fifi Yulaswati is a uh, director of social protection and welfare at Babanas. She holds a PhD in planning and development from Southern California. Uh, uh, Dr. Fifi Yulaswati, she holds PhD in planning and development from Southern California in 2004 and took several training courses in uh, development evaluation, change management, and social protection. So, okay, so please, uh, Dr. Fifi Yulaswati, uh, it's time yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mbak Wika, as a moderator. Uh, hello, everybody. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, good morning to Professor Goodley and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have me in this uh, uh, event. I really enjoy the, the chat uh, uh, when Professor Goodley uh, presented. Uh, I realized that many people are coming from all places uh, around around the world. So happy to, to have all of you here. Uh, I would like to share my uh, presentation. This is only eight slides. Uh, I've been asked to give some update on the policy and then uh, its challenges as well as the importance of disability uh, study. So uh, let me start. Okay. Uh, Indonesia uh, have been uh, long experiences in the context of disability uh, policy. We experience a uh, changing paradigm uh, from what we have uh, experienced earlier on the chariot more charity base now moving toward to human right base there have been several uh, laws have been passed uh, starting uh, or for example in uh, 2011 is about the ratification on the UNCRPD and then several uh, presidential decree uh, in 2015 we passed the presidential decree on the human right uh, national action plan which mainly focus on the issue of the disability. Uh, also, we already uh, have a presidential decree on the SDGs, who uh, or uh, which goes uh, talks more on the inclusiveness. And lastly, uh, we already enacted the law uh, number eight in 2016 for the person with the disability. So in terms of the political will and the 
and the policy, uh, we already have a strong uh, pillar as well as corridor to uh, to go with the policy uh, that based on the human right uh, that uh, more full more fulfill and protect as also uh, respect to the person with this the, the disability. Uh, under the law number eight, 2016, I think many of you already know about this. There are uh, around 15 regulation uh, for, imp for implementing this law. Uh, however, up until now, uh, we only process uh, seven of them because uh, some of them already incorporated in this uh, presidential sorry uh, government regulation so currently we already have the government regulation for the um, uh, person with disability master plan uh, this pp number 17 uh, 2019 and uh, also pp number 52 uh, for the person with disability uh, social welfare and lastly for the uh, pp the government regulation Number 13 is about the accommodation in education for a person with disability. The, oh, the four are still in progress uh, and we do hope that it's coming soon by this year. Uh, all of them are already uh, can be enacted so the implementation of the regulation can really be uh, realized. Uh, for the PWD master plan, there are seven strategic objectives that have been developed. First, about uh, developing an inclusive database and planning. So all of databases, uh, not only the ones that are about the person with disability, but uh, mainly about the big databases like uh, social economy, uh, census, and also others. Uh, more and more question now uh, can be uh, mining uh, in relate to the uh, person with disability. At least there are nine question nine questions that uh, directly link to the uh, person with disability in the Susenas. Uh, the second is about the free barrier environment uh, provision. It's uh, entitled to many uh, technical uh, ministries. Uh, and then the third is about threat protection and access to justice. There are many uh, piloting, uh, working with uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Human Rights and uh, Justice, uh, how to accommodate and uh, have a proper um, uh, justice uh, process and then uh, empowerment and self-help uh, the fourth pillar uh, is along the line with the inclusive economy uh, more and more document mentioning about uh, inclusive growth uh, and other uh, inclusive uh, policies uh, six is on the education and training and seven is about the health access and services uh, as a principle, the PWD master plan is, is a reference for more responsive planning and budgeting, and also uh, is also uh, and also is uh, be a reference for many local government how to provide the friend, more friendly basic uh, and public services and provide bigger opportunity of participation for a more inclusive environment. Uh, however. Uh, the implementation still many gap, yeah, because several challenges. First, uh, how to fine tuning uh, the principles of inclusiveness and also the no one left behind is really takes time and uh, need effort uh, iterate, uh, in iterative way. Professor Goodley have been um, mentioned about the complexity between. Uh, how to ensure how to ensure the implementation of the inclusive uh, principles in reality 
Uh, other challenges is about the database. Uh, it's not only about the person with disability data, but the, the, the whole database in Indonesia, in many cases, uh, were developed in silos. So when we are talking about how to tackle the crisis in more integrated way, then the database come, come up with uh, different uh, format and also, of course, different uh, data uh, that make uh, the, the response uh, become uh, complicated. So in the future, uh, there would be uh, continuous uh, updating as well as uh, reformatting how to make an integrated uh, database. Uh, the other is about how to align the government priorities and non-government because uh, in, in current situation, the government has always uh, have a limitation, not only in terms of uh, funding, but also effort, ideas, uh, as well as uh, uh, human resources. So um, we still learn how to really build an institution in more collaborative way, uh, including also for the DPOs. Uh, other is about how to make the master plan, the person with disability master plan, really into uh, um, a real situation. Uh, uh, currently, I, I would say that the master plan, uh, many, many of us already know about what is it, but don't know how to do. So still not only a gap in situation, but also a gap in the understanding and also in the examples. Uh, at the end, we have to aware that Indonesia is not only one dot or point. Uh, we, we are the, the largest uh, archipelagic country with different uh, situation, uh, not only uh, culture, but also languages. So that's part of the challenges that we, we should aware and uh, uh, think about how to synergize all of uh, the effort to overcome the, these challenges. Uh, when we are talking about the person with disability in Indonesia, uh, it's only about 10.6% of total population because we are the fourth populous country in the world. However, uh, we are talking about 28 million people. So it's huge. It's almost the same size with, the, with Malaysia, for example. And um, there are some people uh, that uh, have uh, disability, not only in one perspective, but many, many different uh, situation uh, from vision, uh, difficulties in, in, in in a mobility, in concentration, and many others. Uh, in this is the the update from Susanna's 2019. Uh, many actually more than 50 percent are working, but this data also show that many of them are working in informal sectors, meaning not all of them are in a database of any government policies or program. So in the time of a crisis like a pandemic COVID-19, uh, it's not easy to make them as a target of the expansion of the social protection program, for example. Uh, in schooling, around 30% of the uh, children with disability are in school. I mean, in terms of the database. So still, uh, when, when there is a, a, a crisis and, and we're talking about the e-learning, uh, learning about who they are and where they are is part of the challenge as well. So uh, the, the graph on the right uh, hand side is about the difficulty situation during the pandemic uh, COVID-19 uh, in which show us that the uh, difficulties uh, uh, happen in many situations, not only in terms of mobility, but also uh, give an impact on in terms of the economy, 
uh, as well as on the, the social aspect. So this is more detailed data. This is coming from the report of the rapid assessment of COVID-19 impact on the PWD uh, done by the DPO network. It shows that um, many of them actually uh, have been impacted uh, worsely in terms of economy. Uh, and we could see, I'm sorry, this is in Bahasa, but uh, big percentage coming from the one who work in informal sectors. So when the government provide a, a safety net, uh, many of them uh, don't receive the, the, the program because uh, in Indonesia, informal sector, open time, don't apply of uh, the health insurance or uh, uh, labor insurance as well as uh, others. So in the time of crisis, it is hard to track uh, where and uh, about the, the, the impact of, of, uh, of them. Uh, in terms of the uh, education, there have been some challenges as well. Uh, online, yes, uh, because the, the pandemic uh, have been hit first in the urban areas. Uh, but later on, when the pandemic is expanded to the rural part, uh, the problem to have an online uh, learning uh, happened also to the uh, person with disability. Uh, so on the right um, uh, circle graph, we could see that around 67% uh, mentioning about the situation, despite that they have a connection, it's, it's hard to, to get a, a better understanding on the online uh, learning. So, uh, in essence, the needs of disability uh, studies, uh, particularly when we're talking about, the, uh, about Indonesia, is in a greatly need. Uh, like Professor Goodley mentioned, we up until now, maybe the knowledge about the COVID-19 uh, is not end yet. Uh, there, have, there have been some... Uh, situation that we are still uh, trying to estimate to make a projection but later on we knew that that the estimation is not perfect so uh, any studies in relate to the knowledge uh, about the, uh, the relation between the COVID-19 particularly uh, the impact to the PWD uh, uh, is really in a great need uh talking about the response uh likewise uh i'm i'm gonna focus on more on the availability of the data the data is not belong only to the the government program but also need to to be developed at the local level can be done by the csr the local government even by each villages so in this regard, by having uh, good or better data, we could expand or maybe even reform the programs. Uh, not necessarily the, the government programs, but any initiative at the locals. Uh, the procedure also uh, seems there is a gap. Yeah, When we are talking about the uh, decision-making process at not only at the national, but also the local level, uh, COVID-19 really, really opened up, uh, open eyes uh, uh, all of us that the current uh, procedure is not sufficient to take care uh, all of us how to respond uh, in proper way. So in this regard, uh, we should thinking about the institutional setup in terms of collaborations. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the government should open up the opportunity to work together also with other stakeholders, including the uh, DPO, uh, Disabled Person uh, Organization. Uh, 
lastly the needs for the disability uh, studies uh, i think we need to have a bit a good understanding about the coping mechanism of pwd in different location uh, rural urban java outside java islands uh, 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 isolated places and currently not many pwd studies available that's why when the government want to expand again this is not only about the money only about the money but it's about the what to do how to do uh, even we don't have any we don't have uh, many luxurious to to see some references or uh, uh, studies that we could uh, have a basis to to cope in this situation particularly in regard to the pwd uh, because the the PWD condition is is very uh, varied itself. Uh, I, I would suggest this is only the example when we are talking about the studies, uh, the disability studies. Maybe we could uh, bring up some studies in the context of collaboration for survival. This is only an example when the supply chain has been blocked by the distancing uh, physical distancing or a lockdown in any cities there are there were some initiative uh, or movement to buy a local uh, pro, uh, products or uh, even giving some uh, education or dissemination on the hygiene habits or healthy healthy food and so on i think all uh, all the community uh, tacit knowledge in terms of survival need to be written in more systematic way uh, so uh, when we or government need some reference in the future we could have more uh, variation uh, in terms of the uh, studies uh, the the other idea or, or, or thinking that uh, we could uh, do in terms of disability studies in the context of adaptation in the new normal so there there always be a, 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 a changes of needs uh, in these days uh, this is only only example on the APD in, in Indonesia uh, we, uh, or a personal protective equipment uh, which provide uh, opportunity uh, to invent or uh, innovate any any product so I think all of this need to have some facilitation and for a good practices, it would be very useful if there would, that there is someone who, who uh, review and then write it in more systematic way in terms of study. So in the future, we could use it as a basis. So uh, this is the last uh, slide. I, I, I would ask uh, to, to uh, to open uh, eyes of all of us that this is a momentum to reform yeah uh, not only in terms of policy but also program even as a system to, to be more inclusive and and fair uh, for the next RKP the annual budget uh, and plan uh, the government already stated about reform in the health system and also reform for the social protection as well as uh, reform for food resilience and disaster resilience uh, when we're talking about the new normal uh, it doesn't mean that we're going to back to the the old normal so we we have to avoid a status quo bias so it's really open up on the innovation new way of uh, doing things learning from response and coping mechanism in communities that I've already uh, give uh, examples. Think also about interlinkages. So it's not only about economy or social, but it's about interlinkages, all sectors, uh, sub-sectors uh, that need to, to, to really work together. Think about the quality of life, meaning it's not only about providing uh, basic services in terms of numbers, but also quality. Because uh, in the future, we, we should be more uh, resilient uh, because the shock can be happen in any time uh, in the future. Preparedness is another keyword that uh, we should 
uh, thing and uh, use it as a basis to rebuild a collaborative institutional uh, setup. At the end, all of this need to be based on the evidence, based on the study, research, and uh, better data. Uh, that's all that I could have to say. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Ibu Vivi Yulaswati, for uh, your presentation. Uh, lots of insight uh, and knowledge uh, from you, ma'am, about uh, uh, disability policy and disability policy implemented in Indonesia. Uh, also about what kind of uh, uh, work program supporting the person with disability in Indonesia, particularly also uh, when the situation uh, under virus outbreak. So uh, thank you, I Ibu. Uh, so the next uh, one is uh, Mr. Slamet Tohari. Uh, Mr. Slamet Tohari is a senior lecturer in the Department of Sociology, Brawijaya University. And also he, he is a senior researcher at Center for Disability Studies and Services. Uh, in Brawijaya, in University of Brawijaya, and also uh, Mr. Slamet Tohari, uh, also Indonesian Chair of Australia Indonesia Disability Research and Advocacy Network. So, uh, for Mr. Tohari, uh, are you ready? Okay, so thank you. It's time yours, sir. Thank you, Ibu Wika, for giving me chance and for delivering me my time to present my presentation. I'm happy here. Finally, we meet each other. Well done, and also nice to meet you also for the all participants, also who we meet, we meet again. And also thank you for the uh, Center for Disability Studies and also graduate program for you know bringing this issue into public and it is very crucial. Hello everybody, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lamet Tohari. I was a secretary of Center for Disability Studies and Services from 20, from, yeah, from 2012 into 2020. I'm no longer at this institution. And since 2011, I have been involved in IDRAN, Australia Disability Research and Advocacy Network as Indonesian Chair. I'm happy here to be appointed as uh, a speaker as well as to handle the, this marvelous webinar. And I want to show my, uh, yeah. Is it, is it okay? Is it, is it good? Okay, yep. okay, it's good. Well, here is my contact if you want to have a correspondence with me. It's fine, this is my email. So actually, I'm a bit nervous uh, talking about disability studies in Indonesian context here because some of our seniors are being participant here. Actually, they are more appropriate than me talking on this explanation in, in this issue in this explanation webinar. And okay, so uh, Indonesia is a big country with 17,000 islands. And actually, there are questions here. It is very critical question and stunning question, such as, do we have disability studies in Indonesia? And what school of thought that we produce? And as a global South country, even in my opinion, that we are barely involved in the development of global sort of disability studies. As post-colonial country, do we involve in the development of post-colonial disability studies? This is also my question. So, uh, as a big country, uh, I know that uh, uh, Indonesia have a problem with very big uh, population of people with disabilities. More than, yeah, correct me if uh, I'm wrong. Uh, more than 10% of our population are disabled, which means that it can be 
more than 25 million of people with disabilities up here in Indonesia. And 9.5 of our population are elderly people. And we have to know also that we have uh, 70 million of young people, which means 70, 70 million of young people, which bonus uh, demography, which means that 20 and 30 years again, those young people will going to be elderly people and our elderly people will be multiplied. And are we ready for the accessible infrastructure? So that's uh, the question. So Indonesian culture is also uh, a big issue if we want to implement the kind of many concepts and many approaches for in disability studies, social model, uh, independent living model, and uh, human rights model and others model. Because Indonesia is living portrait of a traditional mythologist niche with uh, Islamic cosmology. Japanese culture as a dominant one tend to keep a value of togetherness and community. It's not like Western society, which seem very individual. Uh, I have been living in America for two years, but seem very individual. In Indonesia, problem belonging to a person seem regarded as belong to those of group of community. We have term here, uh, mangan ora mangan kumpul, which means it is not important whether we can eat or not, but the most important thing is togetherness. This is a very well-known philosophy that, that has become legacy taken for granted by our society in our daily life. And it's very influential to our society and also policy. If one member of our society differ from the rule of the community, uh, unlike the Western society, where the individual are, are problem individuals are predominantly member of nuclear family. Most people in Japanese, and as I know I'm a Japanese, think that of themselves, first and foremost, they have to extend it to families. Parents are also parents here, not only for the responsible for the, uh, the person if you do wrong, parents are also re responsible for the mistake or you're wrong, and parents are also responsible for the children group and also the problem. So, if you if you got a kid uh, doing uh, something wrong, probably the kid will be asked, "Ana esopo? Who is chill are you?" So this is a so parent centric. So this cosmology is influential, so very influential to use, very influential to to the use of public spaces, and also the use of uh, you know, public facilities. For example, is using of uh, a sidewalk that have been occupied by street vendors, and also some of people also have reason like they never allow their children to go along because the parents and this. Because why? Because if something wrong, the family will be judged by the society. So they never people they never allow people with disabilities to 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 independently. So it's a sometimes effect to the you know the occupying and also the effect the use of a ram and also guiding block that never used by disabled and have been occupied by street vendors. I have a picture on this here. Yeah. In my opinion, this is because of the value of our society because the communality and parent-centric and accessibility is a Western culture that tend to be more individual, but you know, we have a different culture that we have to reinterpret later on. I will explain it. So more than that, we have also Islam. Islam makes a major contribution, contribution in shaping the view and the behavior of person with disabilities to address person with disabilities as the object of pity rather than human rights respect. For instance, it has been very prevalent for people who go to Panti Aswan or nursing homes 
and boarding special school in during the Ramadan especially to give or to share the alms, or we call it as sedekah, expressing their pity for the mustad afin or the weak people. It shows Islamic teaching and disability perceived as a narration that people with disabilities are vulnerable. Group that need help and also many establishment of nursing home for people with disabilities in Indonesia, which actually institutionalization of people with disabilities, strongly and largely motivated, motivated by Islamic teaching, which helping people in charity way. So we have a challenge, cultural challenge, religious challenge, and also lucky us that some of our progressive Muslim group, you know, they have a great interpretation that how they, they do interpretation of Islamic teaching to be more progressive and also to be more friendly and to be more pro to human right. They, they, call, they publish a book, Fikih Disabilities with Islamic Regulation in uh, People with Disabilities with Progressive Interpretation. I know that some uh, NU and also Muhammadiyah, they have a program on people with disabilities. Yesterday, just inform you that my my friend and I in Yakum and also in Tasul Masa and Nahdlatul Ulama just have uh, focus group discussion on mental person with madness and also we call in Indonesia psychosocial uh, and also person with psychosocial and PK with person PK social. This is also an you know a struggle to interpret the religion to be more. Uh, friendly and to be more uh, not biased to people with disabilities. And so we have also the institutionalization of disability. And this is the, the modern approach of disability in Indonesia actually was introduced by Colonial. The first special school here is in Indonesia is the, the, the first special school is Visual Environment Special School in Bandung, West Java, established in 1901 and 1927. Another special school established there. The catering educational need for children with learning disabilities. Actually, they use language, not a language, a retarded person, but I change it learning difficulties. But my document said that retarded person. Okay, that's a very old language. So I'm going to show you about the history of the way government call people with disabilities in regulation. The, the way they call actually is representing the paradigm of the way people or government see approach to people with disabilities. In 47, we have, uh, here we have Bercacat at the and and in in 96, in 1954 we have person with physical or mental deficit atau orang-orang dalam keadaan kekurangan jasmani atau rohani or I translate in english person who has physical or mental deficit and then in 1974 we have tuna tuna rungu tuna dasa tuna which mean tuna in java is we don't have it oh uh, loss or without tunawisma without home, so he is tunadaksa mean without without body. I, I don't know. It's quite funny I think. And then in 1980 we have uh, another term which is uh, person with suffering from defect. Oh, yeah, penderita cacat. In in English we can translate to person with suffering from defect. So I think so disability is suffer. Okay, so now after that we have a, let's say, we after that we have a penyandang cacat in the regulation on 1997. Penyandang cacat mean person with deformed or disabled person, not people with disabilities. And after that in 2011, after ratifying the CRPD, Indonesia has new term which is penyandang disabilitas, or in English we call it as person with uh, disabilities. So 
here is uh, the road to to get the implementation of equal right whatever the approach like social model human rights model independent living uh i believe the model crypt model or they have to you know you have to adapt the indonesian culture because there are challenges the first is those approach perspective are still available i mean the western the, the, the japanese culture the indonesian culture the uh, colonial culture which is institutionalizing people with disabilities introduced by western society we are colonial they're still available in indonesia they're contesting in each other and but some of ngo and also dpos brought new perspective social model if we want to implement the equal right person with disabilities or implement the social model model which is very common now in indonesia and human right approach which is also very common in disability activities we have to first taking deep consideration into indonesian culture or in another term we have to use them as a social capital interpreting the culture so that we have to make uh, you know smooth make them as an instrument to smooth our culture here the culture sometimes can be pardoned Hmm. Yes, in Singapore, ke, Kerry Heng. Sorry, please the admin. The admin, please. The... Yes, we will. We will fix it. Okay. okay. Thank you. So we have also then we have also had problem to interpret the Islam because Islam is so influential in Indonesia. This uh, Indonesia need to make a friendly interpretation. Islam. Terus di saya mengerti. Kira bayar eh. Belum boleh bu. Nanti. Nang oke okay. aduh Pak Selamat Pak Selamat could you please uh, make all okay. your okay thank you. I think uh, okay any concept from Western any concept from like any concept of Western theory will get difficulties and also challenges and they will get distract to be implemented in Indonesia because just like independent living its concept of people with disability should be independent and their rights should be protected by government and society but sometimes you know this concept is law and make it in the liberty and also independent is the essential and basic thing from the concept this is not congruent with indonesian culture so the, the parent centuries harmony and so it's mean we have to take care of them so this is the, the challenge that we have to, to to deal with this so i just do not research Related to the scholar, so I, I I Google it. I Google disability in Indonesia. Yeah, comparing to other countries, there are 18 1000 18, only 18,000 result. So I also Google disabilitas Indonesian language for disability is only 15,000 result. So I also Google Diva. I saw Google Divable, which only 6,000 results. Compared to, let's say, I compare to disability in Australia, there are million results. Or disability in UK, there are million results. Or even in our network, Malaysia, orang kurang upaya, I think this is the way the Malaysian call for the people with disabilities, there are 800,000 results. So, Indonesia is so limited. We need more people to talk about disabilities. We need more people to talk about disabilities in many perspectives, in many ways. This is a very, you know, challenge. This is very challenging for us to do more and more, even DPO, academic stakeholders to talk about disability more and more. So this data is showing about the, you know, the, so very, so very you know limited 
even talking about people with disabilities, even you know disability research service in campus is also the data. There are only ten campus giving services for students with disabilities, and Indonesia has four thousand four and five hundred thousand of higher education. Only ten university giving services of students with disabilities. I think I'm happy. What about the disability studies? I'm happy with the my university, Universitas Brawijaya. They raise the issue of disability. They open the master program of people of master program of disability studies. I'm so optimistic person that what uh, we will contribute to the development of disability studies, and we also contribute to the policy in Indonesia. Uh, this is the very good quote that I got from Lisa Watson. If you come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you come because your liberation is conducted with mine, let's us work together. I think that what I'm going to say, that I what I'm going to talk, that what I talk, time is yours, Ibu Wika. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Pak Selamat Tohari, for your uh, insight. Uh, he he's talking about um, many uh, disability in Indonesian culture, and also uh, how Indonesian community in Indonesian community context, and also relationship between disability and uh, religion. So, a lot, lot issue uh, coming from uh, discussion. So. Uh, I will uh, go to uh, next session uh, Q uh, Q and A question and answer. Uh, everyone can ask a question directly by click uh, the the right hand on the screen uh, on participant. But but because uh, we have a limitation uh, time, just only a few uh, audience can ask directly. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but but before that, uh, I can also read uh, some question from audience, uh, and I hope all speakers can respond the uh, the question. Like from uh, Ibu Monica Madianingrum, uh, Ibu Monica asks to Professor Dan Goodley, um, uh, considering what he mentioned about non-disabled people are often the main problem of disability, how non-disabled people should engage in disability studies, uh, what roles and uh, projects which are crucial to be undertook. Uh, I think uh, maybe uh, Professor Dan Goodley can uh, respond. Thank you. Thank you very much and thank you so much for the presentations. Uh, from Vivian Slamat. Um, I mean, we have to acknowledge that uh, non disabled people um, occupy a privileged and powerful position, and non disabled people therefore have to address um, themselves as a problem and, the and they need to relinquish power. Um, in the UK, when a question of disability is often asked, then the answer is sought uh, from doctors, medical doctors, from academics, from policy makers, but is very rarely asked of disabled people who are the experts by experience. So for me, I think the first thing we need to do is to recognize that non-disabled people occupy a kind of ableist supremacy a little bit like white supremacy and we need to um, take non-disabled people to task uh, to challenge them um, to challenge their ideas their assumptions but I think it's fair to say that being non-disabled will be different where you are in the world um, and I think um, as we've just heard from the last presentation, one needs to recognize that people are not just non-disabled, they occupy particular places, cultural positions, professional positions, positions of status. 
And so we have intersections here that need to be addressed. For, for in the UK, for me, there needs to be um, a real challenge to um, so-called expertise of non-disabled people, excuse me, which, um, which causes disabled people real problems. Hello? Uh, hello, Professor, Professor Goodley? Yeah, you have to unmute first. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy with that. Happy yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, I can hear. Thank you. Oh, in the office. Of office in the middle. It's not. It's not. Oh, chill out, it's not. Professor. It's not. It's not. It's not. Sorry about, uh, okay, so uh, could you please uh, share again, uh, Professor Dead Goodley? Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, thank I'm you. Yeah, I'm happy. I feel I've answered that question. Uh, happy to go back. Okay, so is there uh, any response from uh, uh, Ibu Monica? Are you happy? Okay, so we can go to uh, the next question from Pak Iska. Or Pak Gunawan. Uh, is there any concept of disability inclusive model in building and infrastructure design that is suitable for rapid development in developing countries such as Indonesia? I think uh, uh, this is not only to uh, press Professor Dan Kuti, but also to Ibu Vivi, Vivi Yulaswati. Yeah, I mean, um, we, we, in the UK, we obviously have models of universal mm -hmm. design. Uh, and inclusive design and inclusive design and universal design are different um, but the idea of kind of inclusive design is very much in keeping with the idea that we start with um, speaking to disabled people and their organizations at the very start of considering any design currently in the UK um, the problem that we have is that universal design is um, a recommendation rather than um, uh, uh, an essential policy requirement. So the, the designers of buildings or architects um, and companies designing buildings can demonstrate that they are being inclusive, but they are not currently expected by law to be inclusive and so it's essential that as we need to get as much of that um those recommendations placed in legislation and in law thank you thank you uh professor there is a uh, one question from dominic dean from germany uh, uh, I think he uh, he asks about how do you see the role of the so-called global north speaking for the global south uh, how do you see the academic and NGO or DPO future concerning a global uh, disability studies discourse thank you yes thank you um I mean, the last presentation by Slamet, uh, um, I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, was, was brilliant because what you've done there is to remind us that ideas around disability studies created in the, in the global north um, should, ne should never be transplanted into the global south uh, for two reasons. One is the problem of colonization. 
a new kind of colonization. Um, we have to be very wary of that. And secondly, as you've demonstrated here with your reference to Islam and reference to um, community and interdependence that already exists within Indonesia, um, we need to be mindful of understanding how those kind of knowledge systems and ways of being together um, are actually essentially important in trying to think through how we organize um, disability theory, policy and practice. Would you agree? Agree, yeah. Okay, maybe uh, Pak pa Selamat Tuhari can respond also? Uh, actually, uh, I have a person, you know, I, I have a, there is a book with, uh, written by, I don't know, I think Sound Goof. Dan, Dan is also one of the contributors on that book, and also Karen Soldatik. Yeah, and it's about disability and global south. This, the book is so clear about talking about the, you know, the role of the effect in global, global north and global south. Yeah, I totally agree that you know we cannot just transplant and also pushing the concept and approach which is actually coming from different contexts and also what I call it like zeitgeist, different zeitgeist. So yeah, yeah. We, but you know the theories of Disability should also consider DPOs and also uh, disabled scholars from Global South as well to rebuild and also re reconsider the idea on disability studies. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think uh, there is a not question but, uh, about a statement from uh, Pradia Pertiwi. I think this is, uh, we're going to Pa Amex, Pa uh, Selamat Tohari. A very intriguing question about conceptualization of people with disability in Indonesia. I believe your book is one that explore in depth how disability is perceived in Japanese society. Uh, so we are lacking perspective of other Indonesian culture. So is, is it good? It's not a question, yeah. Not a question, but uh, just uh, her statement. But uh, I think uh, she wants to uh, get a response from you, I think. Uh, yeah, but we have to, you know, I uh, totally agree with the Dan statement about the, you know, intellectualizing people with disabilities. As you know that many people, uh, sorry to say that, people with disability has been, you know, uh, objected as a person who can interview, object of data but the important thing for me is intellectualizing or enlightening and empowering people with disabilities we cannot voice people with disabilities what we can do for the non-disabled is giving the space for people with disabilities to 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 express their voice themselves so i i read the like the the indian feminist uh, Spivak, uh, yeah, she said like this critical theories is not to give the voice of subaltern, but to give the space for the subaltern to to speak out themselves. So, so, yeah, yeah, something like that. So actually, the the, the 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 disability studies is not giving voice for people with disabilities, but actually is clearing the space which is biased, which is dominated, which is uh, occupied by ableism culture and apple-minded culture, so something like that. So disability studies and also non-disabled can join us because this kind of ableism is part of this structure as well. What we can do is clearing the spaces, clearing the bias and make the society more inclusive and giving the space for people with disabilities to be involved in society and poising them, themselves, not poising them disabled people. Mm. That's my opinion, a very rough opinion. We need to talk philosophically again, but you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Professor Goodley uh, also give a response to uh, some thoughts of 
uh, Ibu Fifi and Pak Selamat Tohari. I think first, non-disabled people need to relinquish their power. Uh, Non-disabled people need to consider their role as inherently problematic. They have maintained the non-disabled, albeit dominant imaginary. There is a need to address albeit supremacy. supremacy. And then I think the, the second one, uh, the third one, be wary of importing any knowledge from the global north. Instead, how high we uh, utilize global certain knowledge in contributing to critical global disability studies. I think uh, that's the thing uh, from uh, Professor Goodley to uh, Ibu Fifi and uh, Pak Selamat. Uh, Ibu Fifi uh, want to respond back or? Yeah, I, I just want to add some points uh, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, some question in relate to the uh, design, the inclusive design, as well as the inclusiveness policy in, uh, in jobs, for example. Uh, I would, what I could say that the, in terms of policy, we act, actually already have uh, some foundation. Yeah? But again, because we are in a, uh, in a big country with uh, so many people, uh, the prob in many cases, the problems are in the implementation. So uh, the problems include uh, some of the element of the performance indicators, for example. There are many um, uh, uh, sectors that not yet equipped by the uh, performance indicators. Also, uh, some sometimes we have low supervision, monitoring, and control, and at the end, uh, weak uh, law enforcement. So uh, I think uh, all of this need uh, all of us to develop kind of like a social control, yeah, awareness, building awareness uh, about the rights. Uh, despite that, the, the the government already provide or build or give some foundation. Again, if uh, all of us not uh, don't have an awareness. Or, or uh, I, I would say like a social control. I think it's almost nothing. Uh, no, nothing in the in the in the in, in the in the realization. So again, uh, some studies uh, that could open up many people about the situations and uh, awareness about the the importance uh, that we should not leave anyone left behind uh, it's really important okay uh, there are one question again Ibu uh, from Utami Dewi uh, how about the government planning to provide inclusive employ employment for uh, persons with disabilities in Indonesia since we already implemented the employment quota yeah. policy, 1% in private sector and 2% in uh, public sector. Yeah, likewise, um, uh, Wika, uh, like I mentioned earlier, in terms of uh, pol uh, regulation, policy, there have been so many uh, policy been enacted, yeah. But again, in the implementation, uh, I think we have a good example, so firms who uh, receive uh, disabled even more than than one percent or even more than ten percent, yeah. But then it's not only about receiving them uh, in the beginning, but also how to make them uh, uh, what is it betah uh, apa ya comfy, yeah, uh, with the environment, uh, having a good relationship between uh, others because. Uh, some cases show that uh, the disabled that have been received by uh, a worm uh, not only last than uh, six months, then he or she will uh, left the, the, the opportunity uh, by many uh, um, uh, reason. Yeah. So I think uh, again, uh, I think when we're talking about the inclusiveness, we should come up with the same understanding about what is it and also how how to really implement it. Okay, okay. Thank you, Ibu. 
uh, one question again uh, to Professor Goodley from Eko Nugroho. What are your strategies for inclusiveness in disability in university? Thank you. Thank you. So I think it's a brilliant question. So, um, I mean, one of the models that we um, use, and I think it addresses one of the questions that was in the chat uh, box as well, um, from, I'm just reading now, uh, uh, Ishak Salim, um, yeah. founder of Indonesia Disability Movement. Yeah. 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 I mean, I totally agree um, with, the, with, the, with the comments there. So one of the models we, we, which we adopt and try to adopt here within the universities is something called co-production, which uh, comes from community-based research, which comes from community organisations, and that's about bringing together academics and non-academics uh, to work towards knowledge production that addresses questions and concerns of the community and what that means is not giving up on academia or giving up on the university but seeing what the university can offer the community and what the community can offer the university and to recognize that as he said here that that uh, knowledge is not just produced in universities it's produced in communities in disabled people's organizations and we need to work together to generate knowledge together. Uh, and through doing that, we can actually be, we can promote inclusion. So if you want to think about promoting inclusion in a university, speak to disabled people's communities within the university and outside of the university. Work together collaboratively. Recognize that we will have arguments and we will disagree and we will hate each other now and again, and also love each other. Um, because this is where real knowledge takes place. And it goes back to what Vivi uh, was saying earlier around um, the ways in which we implement inclusion is by bringing in disabled mm. people's organizations right from the start. Mm. So, you know, this is not the worst knowledge is, is created only in universities because it's knowledge created within universities by academics for other academics. That's why most people do not want to be locked in an elevator with an academic, because it would be the most boring thing ever, right? We need to generate knowledge outside the university and bring in the university and the community together. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Goodley. Um, there are two questions. Uh, uh, for Ibu Vivi, how about development planning in Indonesia will be the rich, the inclusive development through SDGs? If from Angreni Pikulima. <laughs> I was about to write. <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, the process is about the building a commitment. So it's not only from, uh, I think, when we are talking about the, S the or maybe I should say, the differences between the MDGs and the SDGs is about the way to do it. Yeah. Uh, on the SDGs, uh, since the beginning, there, there have been a commitment about working together not only from the government side but also other stakeholders uh, many of us already know about the the goals yeah but then how to achieve the goals and realize that actually the achievement of those goals uh, rely upon also the, the the achievement of other goals so i'm talking about the interlinkages so in this regard when we are talking about working together doesn't mean that uh, someone will bring their own uh, flag, but need to, to understand about, about other flags and really building a commitment. So it's about the timeline. It's about uh, a clear indicators on the performance uh, and output. Uh, and, 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 and I, I think uh, 
uh, apa namanya uh, COVID-19 is really op, uh, open uh, an op, uh, the fact that what we've been so busy in the previous years with all the coordination is not enough yeah because i think many of us still working in silos seems that we already completed but that's within our own goal or our own portfolio in fact all the works need to collaborate but again then how i think It's really try and error and uh, take some time uh, to, to reflect from knowledge, from writings, uh, uh, and, and, I can, and, and also from sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Ibu. So, uh, one last question uh, from Ekono Groho to Mr. Tohari. Why only 10 universities that practice the disability inclusiveness in Indonesian universities? Uh, that's also the big question for You know, Bufifi can also answer that because <laughs> from, uh, government actually for the current yeah for the current ticket that we have won win Sunan Kalijaga University of Islamic State in Kalijaga that UP in 2011 you know, we initiate the inclusive and also have a quota for people with disabilities to get involved in our education in our university and then after that. We, you know, we promote the idea of inclusiveness of and the need of inclusiveness of uh, people with disabilities in university and some uh, great result that uh, our government also uh, have a regulation related to, you know, the university should open for all people, including people with disabilities, and also they should open uh, disability services, or we call it ULT, university. Unit layanan disabilitas, mm. disability services. Mm. But yeah, only big universities can afford our. Uh, only the university can provide disability services because this regulation is just two or uh, three years ago. Probably we need more to advocacy. We need more advocacy to university, so they tend to be more inclusive. I think I'm happy because my university is leading university in giving services for students with disabilities and lucky us congratulations for Pak Re uh, Rektor and also for Ibu Zubay Daning Singh. Last year we got uh, a word from Zero Project from UN. We, yeah, some of the official people are coming to Australia because they are so inclusive and one of the important university in Indonesia giving important and influential in giving a uh, services for students with disabilities. Yeah, I'm happy for that. Yeah. Yeah. And also Pak Eko actually is part of the team that, you know, making our university more inclusive. Okay, so I think uh, uh, no question um, from uh, audience. So I think this is the end. So uh, before I, clo uh, I close uh, this uh, session, Uh, thank you so much for uh, all speakers, Professor Dan Goodley, uh, Ibu Vivi uh, Yulaswati, uh, and Pak Selamat uh, Tohari. Uh, I hope uh, your your insight and your knowledge uh, sharing with us uh, will benefit to uh, to us. Uh, and I hope because we have already initiated uh, the new program, uh, Disability Studies. Uh, so I hope uh, we can join with us to be our students. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm not. I'm not. Con uh, I'm not conclude uh, all uh, uh, insight. But you have already uh, get uh, uh, some enlightenment from all speakers. So, but I will take this opportunity to thank for all speakers and audiences for joining uh, the international webinar this afternoon. Uh, so hope all insight and knowledge sharing by our speaker audience will enlighten us uh, particularly about a disability studies. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So I'm handing back to co-host uh, Ibu Vanessa. Thank you. Okay, as the conclusion has been delivered by Dr. Wika MSE, it also means that our webinar has come to an end. Therefore, I would like to say 
thank you to the sign language interpreter and the typist for assisting our webinar so everyone have a better understanding about the discussion <clears throat> also i want to say thank you to all staff for organizing this webinar and ensure that the event ran smoothly and i am grateful for all your presence and participation in which apprise the awareness and the importance of the inclusive environment in, in higher education level ladies and gentlemen you are the very important part of the webinar success i wish you all a blessed day stay safe and healthy during these hard times let's hope that this pandemic will end soon wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh okay let's take a picture please turn on your uh, video camera on and uh, I would like to remind all the audience that uh, please don't forget to fill up the form because it's really important for you to get the seminar certificate. If you didn't fill up the form, then uh, you will not get the seminar certificate. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Marjono, for giving this opportunity i'm really i really appreciate pak marjono is a you're welcome uh, yeah. head of graduate program we are really happy here we have opportunity right now to study on disability studies because of his generosity i think thank you you're welcome and you are so energetic for sure. everybody yeah thank you no okay so we can start uh, to take picture <coughs> Say cheese. Okay, thank you for all speakers. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you. Nice to meet you again. Okay, nice to meet hey, you. Hey, Victor Zhuang. Harry. Bu Vivi, terima kasih Bu Vivi. Ami Sami, saya pamit ya. Selamat. Iya, Ibu Vivi, terima kasih ya. Terima Have kasih. Nice weekend, everybody. Bye, everybody. Terima kasih. Bye, Ami. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you again. Salam. Selamat yeah. pagi. Salam inklusi. Salam. Salam. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Semoga lebih baik lagi dan undang-undang nomor 8 tahun 2016 berjalan dengan baik sebaik baiknya. Amin. 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 Semoga event yang seperti ini lagi ke depan. Amin. Okay. Iya. Baru lulus kak. Ya, ya, ya. Saya dari PC di Kalimantan Selatan. Oh, saya dari Tegal, dari Universitas Pancasakti. Nah, ini Alhamdulillah kemarin baru lulus. Siapa ya, Pak? Bu Wika tuh enggak? Oh, Pak, Pemkot Kabupaten berarti aja kota Tegel loh. Pak Salim dari Perdik mana ya? Pak Salim. Halo Pak Salim. itu di Sulawesi Selatan Pak. Nggak, uh, mau tahu orangnya yang mana ya? Oh, orangnya. Masih ada nggak tuh Mas Ishak ya? Selamat ya, sukses acaranya. Iya.
Okay, selamat pamit dulu. Thank you, Dr. Sun. Assalamualaikum. Yeah. Yeah. 